we're excited to be back home in the Cole Center here tomorrow night. Um, and obviously to have um, the inaugural Pride game uh, for, I believe it's the department, um, to me that just uh, is something to be really proud of. Um, no pun intended. Uh, Pride game, see what I did there? Um, <laughs> But uh, no, I think um, there, you know, the LGBTQIA plus community um, is a part of our community. They should not feel um, as they're a separate entity um, or group. And so we want to make sure that we open up the doors of the Coal Center. We open up our program um, and understand that there's a lot of different factions in our community of, and different people and different walks of life and sexual orientations and all of that. And all are welcome. And so excited that we're going to be able to um, display that type of mentality and uh, community awareness tomorrow night. Great questions. Uh, coach, going back. Oh, there we go. Co co uh, going back to the the Indiana game. You're in a position where you know you're trying to kind of you know build and kind of provide you know learning moments, so to speak, for your team. And I guess I'm wondering, even in a game like that, what were some of the maybe building blocks or positives or things that you take from there to, to show your players that hey, even against a team of that caliber, this is something you can we can kind of used as a building block? Yeah, I think um, a couple of things, right? They jumped out to an early lead, and then we were able to um, kind of sustain that and came back and executed, made some hustle plays. Um, I think it was 22, 24, 24, 26 at one point. Um, and then we got in foul trouble. Um, Brooke went to the bench, and then Julie went to the bench. And um, one of the things we talk about is we have a really small margin for error um, you know, with those older players. Um, if if they're not on the floor and we're not doing like a normal rotation, we're just getting a breather, but that we have to sit for an extended period of time, um, that hurts our team and it hurts our potential to be in games um, with teams of that caliber, right? You, you don't have a lot of opportunity to make um, a lot of mistakes. You know, they're a really well coached team. They've got some veteran players, obviously. And, um, you know, I think one of the other things we talked about is we had run, we had really kind of turned a corner with our transition defense. Um, in the previous two games, and then that game uh, kind of reverted back um, to some old habits, running at the ball, um, not talking, and um, at times for the younger group, getting overwhelmed by the, the environment, right? There's 10,000 plus people, um, it was loud, um, and you know, Indiana kind of kept making the right decisions, and we didn't always make the right the decisions, or shots don't fall, then all of a sudden it starts to feel even more um, daunting of a task but um, I think you know I talked to Sarah Williams after and I said you know we're going to be in these situations right now and we have to learn from them because in a couple of years we're going to be winning these games and that's what we want to kind of continue to um, uh, you know um, implore them that this will pay off and these are lessons that we can learn as you know when you're in this situation what we want to do how we don't want to get overwhelmed by the moment or making sure that we execute our game plan. Um. Julie's on the cusp of at some point here. Soon she'll get, <laughs> she'll reach a thousand yeah. points. Um, I mean, you've spoken about her before, but I mean, I guess just you know, as you're at this point in the year, you know, she's leading you not only in scoring, but um, you know, in assist. And for a while, she was leading in, in rebounds as well. Um, I know as a co-captain, there were you know, you expect big things or a lot, a lot from them. But just can you speak to kind of the whole package of what she's been providing? Yeah, you know, I mean, I think, um, like I just said before, if Julie's not on the floor, um, you know, we're a different team. Um, she does a little bit of everything. I mean, and she's answered the call if we need her to run the point, backup point for us, or she plays the four for us, she'll play the two, the three. Um, sure, she played the five if I really begged her. <laughs> um, but, you know, I think um, it just speaks to what it is that she um, wants to leave this program um, with, with her legacy of this uh, and her mark on this program, but I think it also speaks to her evolution and development as a player. Um, you know, these last two years, I think we've seen a ton of growth, not just statistically, but also her mentality um, and wanting the ball in big moments and stepping up and making big shots and things of that nature. And then obviously um, in all the uh, categories where she impacts the game. And um, I think that shows you she's more well-rounded than just kind of a one-hit wonder if you're just making threes or, you know, you just um, lead the team in rebounds. And so I think that her kind of complete um, packageness, I just made that up, uh, um, definitely helps our team be um, that much more successful. 
Um, uh, You're, it's all you, Mark. You're next. Okay. I, didn't, I, didn't <laughs> I told him I would help. So. Oh, I okay, okay. I don't okay. <laughs> the, 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 the microphone I don't, I, don't, like, I think these people over here are just fine. Yeah. I think it's okay. <laughs> um, you know, the last couple games, especially um, – uh, the Michigan State game, Christina, you know, she was, mm -hmm. a, she's kind of player that, you know, um, you know, at least for a while it seemed like she maybe she wasn't getting as many minutes, and now she's in the last few games she's kind of, you know, been more more on the floor. Um, when she's giving you what you want, what what is that, and what kind of impact does she provide when, you know, she's on her game. Yeah, I mean, I think what Christina does really well is um, she makes open shots. Um, you know, she has a lot of confidence, and we do as well in her um, three. Um, you know, if she's able to kind of get downhill and it's a one-on-one -on -one situation um, to the basket, uh, she take, has aggressive drives to the basket or to get to her pull-up. Um, I think she's provided that spark, especially in the you know, Michigan State game, uh, where we needed a little bit of a lift off the bench, and she's been able to, to do that for us. And I think that's a great role that she's been able to play for our team, um, knowing that you can get you know six or eight points um, coming off the bench and um, you know, doesn't take very long for her to try to make that impact. What we have to, you know, be able to continue to get from her too is um, on both sides of the ball, right? You have to be able to defend and keep people in front of you too, and then also be able to to provide that um, that offense. But I think she is um, has a mentality of you know an offensive player, that instant offense kind of thing, and so I think that's what she's been able to do when she's come into the games. I also want to get your thoughts. Excuse me. Um, <clears throat> Your thoughts on Maryland? Uh, obviously, another talented team. What's kind of every team's different? What 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 do you see as being the the challenges or maybe the keys in in facing facing them? Yeah, I think um, you know Maryland. Is, I think it's been pretty well documented this season is a different team than they've been in the past. Um, you know, they don't necessarily have a traditional post. Um, you know, big five player. Um, they switch quite a bit, um, one through five. Um, and so I think you have some opportunities for mismatches and some slips, um, you know, inside. Um, I think, you know, where they really make their money is um, in transition. Um, you know, they get up and down the floor, they push the pace. Um, they look to get easy baskets or get threes, and um, they'll press for 40 minutes. Usually it's like a three-quarter court, one, two, two. So you just have to kind of – they're looking to slow you down a bit, and then if you go into the trapping areas, they want to try to turn you over. I think they're turning people over almost 19 times a game, which we have not done a great job of taking care of the ball um, in some of our games this season. And so that's something we've talked about and worked on in practice, making sure we're able to break their press. So. Um, I told our team we have to control the tempo of this game and make it more of a half court game than um, you know full court uh, track race. And at the same time, um, you know when we we need to be kind of um, what's the word uh, opportunistic with our runs, right? So if we are able to get out and transition and get easy buckets, we get stops. Let's do that. But um, if not, let's try to uh, control the tempo and make them have to guard us in the half court because we do think that from a size advantage, we have a we have a, an advantage. Your field goal percentage is quite a bit higher this year than it has been in the past, led by Sarah. Can you just talk about how that how has she affected the team and just making those shots when you need them? Yeah, you know, I think, um, I mean, having a, a post presence, right, having someone who you can throw the ball inside and get two points or can go and get an offensive rebound um, ab absolutely uh, helps your, your field goal percentage. But I think also um, she takes up more um, attention from opposing teams, right? So now people are having to double. And so we've talked quite a bit about that with our team, not trying to force the ball into her, but take advantage of the fact if they're going to have heavy help, which Maryland does, they crowd the paint, let's get skip passes, let's Let's, you know, be ready. We've got great, you know, three-point shooters. Let's knock in open shots and um, get our feet set and not try to overpass. Um, and at the same time, when she's got a one-on-one -on -one matchup, we've got to get the ball to her and get her easy points, too, because she's working really hard at that. Um, circling back to the Pride game, you mentioned that the department, this might be the first Pride game that's ever happened for the department. What does it mean for you, for the team, to be setting those new high standards for including community and, and building up your fan base? Yeah, I mean, to me, um, it's a no-brainer. Um, you know, this has been something that 
um, I've had at other universities that I've been a part of, and I think it's so critically important that um, not just our community here in Madison, but that our fans across the country um, and the world, dare I say, um, but that they understand that we we don't just um, talk the talk, but we walk the walk, right? So when we talk about inclusivity, when we talk about that being one of our pillars of the department, when we talk about um, diversity, um, that's not only just of color and of thought, but also of, of sexual orientation. And you know, we have communities in this country that are um, have been alienated for entirely too long and we have a responsibility and I think that in a platform like I have as the head coach of this program um, in athletics where we're kind of at the forefront of um, progressive movements and change um, I can't think of a better way to to make a statement and say you know come one come all you know um, and come as you are.